Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Chemistry and we're going to look at the bonds in alkanes, alkenes and benzene. So where does this fit with the specification then? So it comes down here, look, we're going to be looking at bond angles, bond lengths and bond strengths in alkanes, alkenes and benzene. We're also going to introduce the idea of the 3D representation. So when we do the bond angles, we're going to be looking at the bonds in terms of wedge and dashed lines. First up though, if you don't subscribe, please do. Your support is very much appreciated. And please take advantage of the likes and the comments features and let me know what we think. So this is what we're going to be doing then. We're going to look at the angles, the lengths and the strength in the bonds in alkanes, alkenes and benzene. In terms of prior knowledge, it is an advantage or it is worth knowing um, about sigma and pi bonds before you get to this point and being aware that alkanes will only contain sigma covalent bonds whereas the double bond in an alkene is in fact a sigma bond and a pi bond. Now I do have a video on sigma and pi bonds and hybridization and I will put a link in the description below so if you're unaware of those two terms I do suggest you go and check out that video uh, first. Let's take a look at the bonding present in benzene then. So the bonding in benzene is it's similar, it has some similarities to the bonding in an alkene. So let me just remind you of the bonding in an alkene. So we're interested in this double bond part and the double bond in an alkene is where the overlap of p orbitals. So it's the overlap of these p orbitals here. Let me draw. So we've got p orbitals on each carbon and these p orbitals overlap and you end up with your pi bond. So we end up with electrons like this, a cloud of electrons above and below these two carbons and that's our pi bond and there's two electrons in that pi bond. Now something similar happens in benzene. So here we have all of our p orbitals and there's one electron in each of these p orbitals so that's six electrons in total for the six carbons and what happens here is all six p orbitals overlap and we end up with a ring of electrons above and below this structure so if i rub out these p orbitals now and show them overlapped so we end up with a delocalized electrons and there's six of them we end up with a ring of delocalized electrons above and below the plane. So it's like a massive pi bond, if you like, and there's six electrons delocalized throughout this ring structure. Let's start by comparing the strength of bonds in alkanes and alkenes then, because this is quite an easy one. So we know that this bond between the two carbons in an alkane is a sigma bond, and we know that this double bond is a sigma bond and a pi bond. So the double bond is going to be stronger than the single bond because it has that pi bond. So the double bond in an alkene is stronger than the single bond in an alkane. So that's quite an easy one. In terms of the bond length, the, the rule of thumb is the stronger the bond, the shorter the bond. So that means that the alkene bond is also shorter. So the bonding in alkene is shorter and stronger than the bonding in an alkane. So where does benzene fit in terms of bond length and bond strength? Well, it actually sits directly between the two. So the bonds in benzene are stronger than the bonds in alkanes, but weaker than the bonds in alkenes. And likewise with bond length. The bonds in benzene are all the same length. These carbon-carbon bonds are all the same length, but they are longer than a double bond in alkenes, and they are shorter than the single bonds in an alkane. And likewise with the strength, the bonding in benzene, or the carbon-carbon bonds in benzene, are stronger than the carbon-carbon bonds in an alkane, but they are weaker than the carbon-carbon double bonds in an alkene. Next up then is the shape and the angle of the bond. Now this is where we're going to see our 
um, dashed and wedged 3D diagrams. So I'm going to focus on this carbon here and I'll focus on this carbon on this one and a carbon here. So it's, it's important that we focus on one carbon when I talk about the shape and the bond angle. Now in an alkane, there's four bonds and four bonds ends up with a what we call a tetrahedral shape. Now the theory here is that these four bonds will get as far away from each other as possible and the furthest away they can get from each other is 109 degrees. Seems very precise but mathematically that's the furthest away that four things can be on a 3D shape is 109.5 degrees. Now just to explain what I'm doing with this dashed and wedge, when I've drawn a straight line such as this one and this one, that's said to be flat with the, the page. So if this was a piece of paper, those two lines that I've drawn are just flat with the paper. However, the other two lines are not. When I've drawn this, this dashed line, that means it's going into the page. So that'll be going into the paper. And when we've drawn this wedge, that means it's coming out of the paper. So it's, it's a way of drawing 3D on a piece of paper. I don't have that problem with the alkene though, because it's said to be planar around this carbon. So this carbon here, we've got a carbon double bond, single bond, single bond. It's actually flat. It's said to be planar. And the bond angle now is 120 degrees. So it's 120 degrees and it's said to be trigonal planar. And it's exactly the same in benzene. Benzene, although it's not the same double bond, the bonding's not too dissimilar. And the bond angle again is 120 degrees. So the shape and the bonds in benzene is the same as the shape and the bond angle in an alkene. And I called the shape of the first one. I didn't write it down, so I'll write it down now. The shape here was tetrahedral. That was tetrahedral with a bond angle of 109.5. And that is the same for all carbons in an alkane. And 120 trigonal plane is the same for all carbons in a double bond. And likewise, all carbons in benzene, trigonal planar, 120. And here's a nice summary table then to, to sum up all the key points. So the longest bond you'll find in alkanes and then benzene and then alkene having the shortest bond. And the same idea with the strength, the strength of the bonds in alkanes are the weakest going down to alkene. I'm just reiterating that it's the carbon carbon bonds that we're talking about. And there's our bond angles 109.5, 120 and 120. And that's the end of this video then. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you found that useful.